such a timeless genre, but if you look at the chord structures, we often find the classic 12 bars using the same three chords over and over. And I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just a characteristic of the blues. And of course there's all sorts of variations, but ultimately it's mostly derived from those same 12 bars. But this tune, which is considered a blues standard, is just the perfect blues chord progression. It does everything a little different and I'd love to take a look at it. The piece is called Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out. The first recording of this blue standard dates back to 1927, and during the years we've seen many different renditions of the Nobody tune. Nobody needs you, oh, when you're down and out. When you're down and out. Well, I won't live with the Oh, well, nobody knows you when you're down and out. Now, when nobody I'm... knows Nobody let me have one lousy job. Once I live the life of a millionaire. And this is how I like to play it. So if you want to learn this piece, how I just play it on the guitar, you can hop over to my second channel after this video, of course, where I'm doing a classic guitar tutorial of the tune. It's Paul David's Tube, that's the name of the second channel. But now, why is this chord progression so great? It's a blues played in the key of C major, following eight bars, and immediately it starts out great with the first two bars, like this. So after that C, I'm playing an E seventh chord and an A seventh chord. Two chords not very often seen in the key of C major, so why does it work so well? Okay, so that E seventh chord, we call it a dominant seventh chord. That's the seventh. A chord that needs to be resolved. There's tension and it seeks resolution. So just listen to this in the key of C. G seventh and C major. <laughs> That's your typical dominant 7th resolution in the key of C. Everyone knows it from the 5, the G, 1, 2, C, D, E, F, G, the 5 chord, to the 1 chord, the C major. But now we play that same thing, not on the 5, but on the 3, C, D, E. So E7. We call that a secondary dominant. And you can see the secondary dominant as a sort of a setup chord for where we, where we want to go next. Again, this chord seeks resolution. It wants to lead somewhere. Where does it want to lead? Well, it definitely wants to lead to an A chord. You see? C. And that A chord is also played as an A seventh chord. And that's a pretty dramatic turn of events, right? Playing an A7 in the key of C. It's a whole different vibe. Anyway, this A7 chord also wants to lead somewhere, right? It's a dominant 7th chord. So this is again a secondary dominant. And where E7 led us to A7, A7 leads us to the D chord. And in this case, D minor. Let's have a listen. Beautiful, right? So now we find ourselves on the D minor, the two chord in the key of C major. But to me, it feels more like the tonic, a new tonic. We're tonicizing the D minor, or so it feels like to me. It's our new home chord. And that gets emphasized by playing an A7 again after the D minor. So now it feels like, yeah, sure, we can hang a little bit on the D minor chord. It feels like the piece could end here if you wish, but it doesn't. Because this is only the first half of the 
tune. Now going to the second half, we find ourselves in a sort of a paradigm shift. We transform from the D minor to the relative major of the D minor, which is the F. And we go there with a nice chromatic bass line. It sounds super cool. D minor. And then to F major. So D to E flat to E and to F. So from the two chord, we go to the four chord because the F is the four chord in the key of C. A chord we find in any blues, very grounded. And then something cool happens because that chromatic run isn't over yet. Nope, we play D minor, chromatic run to F. And then the bass keeps on going to F sharp. We play an F sharp diminished chord. You can play it everywhere, it sounds great, but I like to keep the chord on top, just the A and the C, so. So it all links together a little bit. So this is great. And now we can even keep on going because the next chord is a C major chord. And if we keep on rising that bass, we go to F sharp to G. So we play the C major over a G bass note, which is done in a lot of recordings as well, because it's just, you need to milk that chromatic thing as much as possible. Or like this. But in this case, I'm actually not doing that because I'm going to the C major chord which is a start point of another chromatic run. So first we walk up chromatically to F sharp, and then we're going to walk down chromatically from the C major to the A7. So C, B, B flat to A, sounding like this from the F. <laughs> That's awesome, right? If you're just as excited about this as I am, just hit that like button gently, if you will. It means a lot to me. And now again, we find ourselves at the A7 chord. And this is the perfect setup, again, a secondary dominant chord to the next place we're going. And you might have heard about it. It's the cadence two, five, one. It's used in jazz a lot, but it's not really something that's exclusively for jazz. No, 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 for blues, it works great as well. So the A7, sets us up to go to the D chord. We've seen that before, right? And then we use the D minor chord, which wasn't the secondary dominant. But what if that D chord again was a secondary dominant? Well, then we play it as a D seventh chord, and that's exactly what happened. And a D is the two C, D. So D, and the D is again also the secondary dominant of a new chord. So A leads to D, and D leads to the G7. And we've seen the G7 before in the beginning of the video where I said, well, the classic dominant resolution in the key of C is G7 to C. And now this is exactly what happens. We go to the G7 via the D7, the two, the five, and the five leads us to the C major chord. And now we've come full circle. So that end, just listen how lovely and how elegant it moves. It's just chords, but there is so much information inside the chords that you can use to play lovely lines over it. For example, the last four chords gives us a lovely chromatic run. All these little things, there's so much cool stuff you can do. Let's just move over the chords one more time. So C major to E seventh, dominant seventh, secondary dominant of A. Resolves to D minor, five of D. This feels like home a little bit. But now to the second part of the, of the chord progression, the paradigm shift. Chromatic line to F major, the four chord, to the sharp four diminished. We see that a lot in blues. And often that F sharp diminished resolves back to the one. 
which goes back to the sixth chord played as a dominant seventh chord which is the five of two which is the five of five which is the five of one and when I say five of one it means the secondary dominant of that chord I'm talking about so it's such an elegant chord progression and I hope Oh, actually, when you play the tune, you don't even think about all these things that happen, but you just know it sounds great. Nobody would say, hey, that's a weird chord in the key. Nobody thinks about that. You don't have to think about it to play it, but if you know how it works and why it sounds so great, you can use all these little things in your own music way more easily and also explain it for yourself, why it works. Why does it sound great? Or maybe if you want to spice up something you have lying around, you can use these same tricks as well. So it's a lovely play between tension and release, still feeling very down to earth and bluesy. And above all, it's so much fun to play. So if you're interested into learning to play it how I did, you can check out the tutorial on my second channel where we go over it note for note. And for now, please hit that like button if you're just as excited about this chord progression as I am. Uh, of course, subscribe, hit that bell icon for all the good stuff. And I want to thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Cheers.